Hi, welcome back. In this lecture, we'll take a look into what is Spring Data JPA. Well, before understanding about Spring Data JPA, let's first understand what is the problem and what problem Spring Data JPA solves. Well, consider we have a Java application architecture over here. So this is basically called a three layer architecture. We have a controller layer, service layer and DAO layer. And typically we use JPA or Hibernate to develop the DAO layer. All right. Well, if we use Hibernate to develop the DAO layer, then we need to write a lot of code. For example, let me jump into GitHub repository. Here I have created Spring Hibernate project to just showcase how much amount of code that we need to write in order to develop the DAO layer using Hibernate. Well, if we use Hibernate, then we need to create an interface, for example, customer DAO in this case, and we need to define all these crude methods in this interface. Next, we need to create a class for example, customer DAO MPL class which implements this interface and override all the methods from this interface and provide the implementation. All right. So if we use Hibernate to develop the DAO layer or the repository layer, then we need to write a lot of code, right? We need to create an interface and then we need to define crude methods in interface. Next, we need to create a class which implements this interface and its methods, right? Well, if you closely observe this code for single entity that is customer entity, we are writing this much amount of code. Let's say in your project, you have a lot of entities, for example, you know, student, uh, employee, user, order, right? So in order to develop the DAO layer for these entities, we need to create an interface and then we need to define a crude methods and then we need to create a class and then we need to implement interface and its methods, right? We need to basically write a lot of code for a entity isn't it and if you closely observe this code here you can see only the difference the entity name and the primary key type rest of the code remains same for all the entities all right so this is basically a problem we are basically repeating the same code again and again right so instead of repeating the same code why not we basically write a library and keep all the generic code over here so that is what the spring data jb basically does well i have created one more project which demonstrate the usage of Spring Data JPA. By using Spring Data JPA, we can reduce a lot of code here. For example, we just need to create an interface and extend Spring Data JPA provided interface that is JPA repository interface and just we need to pass entity name and the primary key type. That's it. We will get a full crude operations for this given entity that is customer entity. Right. So this is how Spring Data JPA basically provides a solution to reduce a lot of amount of code that we need to write you know in order to develop the DAO layer. Well Spring team has developed Spring Data JP library to reduce amount of boilerplate code that is required to develop the DAO layer. For example if you can just head over to Spring official website here you can see under project section you can see Spring Data framework. Well within Spring Data framework you can see Spring Data JP module. Okay, and we use Spring Data JPA module to develop the repository layer. And Spring Data JPA basically reduces amount of boilerplate code that is required to develop the DAO layer or JPA based repositories. Well, Spring Data Framework basically provides all these modules for different purposes. And in this course, we are going to use Spring Data JPA module to see how to you know reduce amount of boilerplate code that is required to develop the DAO layer. All right. We are going to learn a lot about Spring Data JPA in this course. Well, I hope you pretty much understood what is Spring Data JPA. Well, Spring Data JPA is basically used to reduce the amount of boilerplate code required to implement data access object layer. And Spring Data JPA is not a JPA provider. It simply hides the Java persistence API behind its repository abstraction. It means that Spring Data JPA is not a JPA provider. For example, Hibernate is basically a you know, JPA provider, right? But Spring Data is not a JPA provider. It's simply, you know, developed on top of JPA. Well, basically Spring Data JPA is an abstraction layer on top of Java Persistence API, right? And Entity Manager is an interface of Java Persistence API. Well, basically Spring Data JPA has a JPA repository interface it internally uses all the JPA provided methods. For example, this is the JPA repository interface. Okay, it has a methods like 
flush save and flush save delete okay exist count find all so these are all the methods belongs to jp repository interface and all these methods internally uses entity manager api to perform different operations with the database okay so this jp repository interface methods don't directly connect to the database these repository methods will first internally get call to the entity manager methods and these entity manager methods will talk with the database okay so this repository is basically is a abstraction on top of jpa interfaces or the apis all right i hope you understood how the jpa repository methods will internally call entity manager methods to talk with the database okay this is how spring data jpa basically works all the spring data jpa repositories internally uses entity manager to talk with the database okay so spring data jpa is just an abstraction on top of jpa that is java processions api well if you are developing spring boot project and if you want to develop a repository layer or a dao layer for relational databases then you can go ahead and use spring data jpa well in next lecture we are going to take a look into basic flow of spring data jpa then you will able to understand how spring data jpa works behind the scene all right great i will see you in the next lecture